All right, so I am making this video to show how linear algebra can be used in game development to be useful for stuff. And uh, one of the examples I brought up on Reddit was how in a tower defense, you could figure out with a tower's position and a target's position how to know which way to shoot your bullet. And so I'm going to show with this program here how using linear algebra we can figure out which way we need to shoot our bullet. So let me show what we've got uh, just at the start here. So at the start of this program I have a target out here. I have a tower in the middle of the screen and the tower also has this little white bullet that hasn't been fired yet. <clears throat> and uh, our goal is going to be to code to where this bullet will, when, when I press a fire button, the bullet will travel towards the target. And I, I don't mean like going straight up and then, you know, straight right. No, we're going to send a straight line right towards the center of this target. And we can figure that out with linear algebra. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, all right. So let's look at our starting variables. We have uh, basically vectors here. I have two doubles for the tower X and the tower Y. Two doubles for the target, the target X and the target Y. I have two doubles for the bullet X and the bullet Y. I have, uh, wait, why is this underlined? Okay, anyway, I have uh, two, two doubles for the bullets X and the bullets Y. I have two doubles for what's going to be the direction X and the direction Y, as in which way the bullet should be traveling. I have a double for the bullet's speed, how fast it's going to travel. And I have a Boolean for whether the bullet or not has been fired or not. All right, so let's cover how we initialize these variables. So my screen, <coughs> sorry. My screen is 1000 by 1000 in resolution. So I wanted to put my tower in the middle of the screen. So I put my tower at 500, 500. And so what we see is the tower in the middle of the screen. Now I want my bullet to fire from the tower from the exact same spot. So the bullet's position also starts at 500, 500. My target, I put in a different spot. I put him somewhat to the right of the tower, so that's 750. That's a 250 more than 500, and his uh, his Y is uh, above the tower at 100. And I know that's a little weird that 100 is considered above 500, but you have to remember with video, generally with video games, the top left corner is zero zero. So if this is 500 down here, then 100 would be above that. Anyway. Uh, right now, direction, uh, I haven't set it yet, not really. I'm just setting it to zero because when we fire the bullet, we're going to calculate what the correct direction is. So right now, that's that's nothing. <clears throat> so um, I have the game uh, starting with the bullet fired uh, just so that you can see it. Because if this Boolean is false, you won't be able to see the bullet because if the bullet hasn't been fired yet, I'm not going to bother to draw it. But I'm going to go ahead and change the boolean now to false so that you won't see the bullet. So let's go ahead and do that. False. The bullet isn't fired at the start. All right, so now it's gone. <coughs> Man, why do I get a cough right when I start recording a video? And then we have the bullet speed. I have it where once this bullet starts traveling, we're going to have it travel 200 pixels in a second. So that's what this is. This is representing how, how far I want it to travel in a second of time. All right, so now let's look at our, our game loop. So this is the function that's going to be called every single frame. It's going to loop over and over and over. And so this is where our meat and potatoes of this game is going to be. So let's go over that. Obviously, I have the quit button, where if I press escape, the game quits. I have a reset button so that um, once I show the button, the bullet do something, if I want to reset it back to the beginning, I just press uh, letter P. 
and it'll reset the bullet to not fired and back at the tower. All right, and then I have a comment here for fire bullet button, which hasn't been coded yet, and that's where we're going to begin. So let's begin. First thing I want to do is I want to make it where when I press a button on my keyboard, the bullet uh, technically fires. So let's do that. If my keyboard, oh, and I'm coding this in mono game, which is a C sharp engine. Um, you can do this in any engine you want. The math is always the same. It's just I like mono game because I can very quickly get this art um, assets up and running. It's perfect for this tutorial video. All right, so keyboard, when you press the O key on the keyboard, then I want is fired to be set to true. That's very basic. Let's just start with that. All right, so I'm looking at my tower. I press the O button, and there it is. And uh, if I press my reset button, which is P, it goes away. Sometimes I swear it kind of flickers, doesn't it? All right, whatever. Anyway, uh, I want to make it where if I press the fire button, that we, we check if the bullet has already been fired. And... Is fired. So if the bullet hasn't been fired yet, and they press the fire button, then fire it. All right. In here, when we fire our bullet, we also need to calculate the direction the bullet travels. So this is where our direction math is going to come in now. <clears throat> so uh, as I was talking about earlier with vectors if we take a target and we subtract tower position it's going to give us a vector that starts here and covers the whole distance to here like if you could imagine me drawing an arrow right now the arrow would start here and it would point all the way to here and it would stop here that's the vectors that this minus this would give. So let's calculate that real quick. Direction x is equal to target's x minus the tower's x. And the way I was always taught this was that it's a target minus your shooter, aka your tower, is how you get your direction. Direction y is equal to target y minus the tower's y. And um, let's just start. I'm going to put a breakpoint so you can see this get calculated. All right, so I'm going to press the fire button. We're in here. All right, so right now direction is 0, 0, 0, and 0. We're going to have x equal to 750 minus 500. Puts him at 250. And his, his y will be 100 minus 500, which is negative 400. So our direction is now a vector of 250, negative 400. And if you think about those numbers, 250 is to the right, and negative 400 is to up. So we know this bullet now wants to go to the right and up, which sounds correct. You know, that is, in general, the direction towards our target. But the problem is it has length. It has the magnitude as well included in this. And that's not going to work because if we add this direction with the length to our bullet, our bullet is instantly going to be on top of our target. And I can show that. So watch this. Bullet X will now add the direction of X. Bullet Y will now add the direction of Y. I think that, hopefully I did that right. I know sooner or later I'm going to make a mistake because this is, you know, I'm making a video while coding fresh stuff. There's always going to be an accident. It's just bear with me. All right. So when I press the fire button, not only is the bullet going to appear, but he's going to add that direction and instantly be on top of the tower. So here goes. See? The bullet has instantly appeared on the target because he started at 500, 500, but then he minus you know, 250, 
or no, no, he minus 400 up and he added 250 to the right. So he instantly appeared on the target. And so as you can imagine in a tower defense, that's a little overpowered when your bullet just spawns on top of the enemy. So we have to find a way to nerf that. And the best way to do that is to get rid of the, the distance, the magnitude. We want to normalize this vector. So normalize our vector to make the magnitude, also known as length, also known as distance, equal to 1. And so once we have a vector with a distance of 1, we can then apply our own distance to it of how far we want it to go. All right, so uh, the formula for uh, normalizing a vector is to say the vector x, y, I'm, I'm going to say uh, normalized x, y is, is going to be done by taking the vector x, y and dividing it by the magnitude of the vector. And the magnitude of the vector is the square root x times x plus y times y. So this is the, what we have to code. We have to code this part highlighted in order to get our normalized x, y. All right, so I'm not very good at this part, but we're going to do it. Uh, well, let's just, let's just start small. Direction x times direction x plus direction y times direction y. And I believe the math is math square root. Uh, is it capital S? C sharp can be really picky. All right, so when I do that square root, that will return a double. I'm going to make a double called magnitude. Set it equal to that magnitude. And then we are going to take uh, direction x divided by that magnitude. Direction y divided by that magnitude. And what we end up with is a normalized direction. So I want to set a breakpoint so that we can see what the values of this is after we press the button. <clears throat> set breakpoint right there. And it's going to be some fractional value. All right, so ready, set, fire. At our breakpoint, we figure out that the x is 250, the y is minus 400. All right, so the magnitude of 250 times 250 plus negative 400 times negative 400, and we get the square root of that, and that is a magnitude of 471.699. So we're going to take our 250x and divide it by that magnitude of 471, and it gives us 0 0.5299. On our y, we're going to do the same thing. Our direction of y, negative 400, we're going to divide that by the magnitude of 471, and it's going to give us a negative 0 0.84. So our ultimate direction here is 0 0.52 and negative 0 0.84. So it sounds like it's kind of to the rightish and up. And that is correct. So now that is that is our direction. Direction is now normalized. So it has a magnitude of 1. So now if we add this um, direction to our bullet, it's not going to travel very far because we don't have a real distance here. So let me I'm gonna put some logic to move the bullet move the bullet if it has been fired so if is fired then bullet x plus equals and i'm just going to show you how right now with us adding 
the normalize, this bullet is going to be crawling. In fact, I don't even know if we'll we'll see it, but we'll find out. We might see it. I don't know. All right. So ready, set. Oh, that is. Why is it so flickery? Either way, it's it's it is moving, but that speed is horrific. That is your bullet moving at the speed of one. You know the the magnitude of one. We want it where our our bullet travels at direction times our bullet speed. And if I recall, I set my bullet speed to 200, which is a, it, it's going to be for 200 per second, 200 pixels, 200 units. I'm not sure what you want to call it, but this is meant to be over one second. It's a bullet speed of 200 per second. But you'll see when I run this, that bullet is going to be too damn fast because this runs every frame. So ready, set. Fire. It's already gone. Like it was so fast, you can't even tell it actually fired. Yeah. Oh, for a second I saw it flicker. You can kind of see it flicker every now and then. I'll just spam it real quick. <laughs> see how towards target it's it flickers because on on just one frame it was already ninety percent of the way there. All right. So the problem we're having is, like I said, this runs every frame and so every frame i say oh the bullet's been fired let's move the bullet by 200 in this correct direction so you know that way towards the target 200 and it does that every frame and when you're when we're running this at 60 frames per second holy shit it just flies right off the screen so the way we have to fix that is we don't multiply our direction by the full speed we multiply the direction by how much by the speed times how much of a second has gone by and so i have that with game time i can say the elapsed game time total seconds and that will be a fraction of a second so <clears throat> if this is running at 60 frames per second this is going to end up being a double of like 0 0.0166 and our speed being nerfed by that will make the, the bullet travel at a much more reasonable pace. So let me do that real quick for both of these. Why is this one? Oh, because I didn't do the prints yet. There we go. All right, so let's see if that helped. So now when we run this, fire. Man, that is, why is it running like ass? I mean, you can see the bullets working, but this, this API is not drawing very nice. <laughs> it's drawing horribly. Do you have to draw so horrible? But, um, well, so let me go over some of the questions you asked, because you had asked some questions, and I don't remember what they were. Was, uh, why is it when there's two variables, X and Y, other than the formula... Okay, yeah. So one was about what happens if we change the mag the normalized formula to be x equals the x times x square root and y equals the y times y square root. And the problem, I'll, I'll show you that. So we'll we'll comment this out for now. So now if I were to normalize it that way, where direction x equals math square root of well we know for a fact that the square root of a thing times itself is just going to be itself so what we have really is going to be direction x equals um oh, i forgot to divide it didn't i direction x divided by sorry Direction x divided by. So what we really have when we do this, why does it highlight everything? When we do this, we're really just doing this. Direction x divided by direction x, which is always going to be 1. 
And there's also the potential problem of if this direction X is zero, you're, you're gonna be dividing by zero, which is gonna cause a crash in code. So that's why we don't do it that way. But uh, I think that answered that one. And you had another question, let me see what it was. Mentioned the bullet, oh yeah, yeah, so. You mentioned the bullets travel so much, but if it moves 13 right per frame, but how? Why can't we just use the amount per second? So the reason I recommend that you um, make your thing travel based on the amount of past time is because of varying system speeds. So if you uh, write a program and you run it on a computer from the 1980s, you might get one or two frames a second. And if your thing's moving at 20 pixels per frame, it's gonna move like 60 pixels. You know, it's, it's not gonna move that far. Versus if you run that same program on today's computer that can run 120 frames a second, <clears throat> it's gonna disappear right at the start. It's just gonna travel so far so fast. And so the way we deal with varying frame rates is we usually, apply time to our uh, stuff and so that's what that's for and i think i showed you that when i when i didn't have this elapsed time that when i had just bullet speed it was adding 20 to our bullet in the direction every second which was causing it to uh basically teleport right on almost teleport right on top of it but really it wasn't teleporting it was just traveling so damn fast you couldn't see it what i want to know is why is this draw code so flickery kind of bothers me don't mind me i want to look at the draw clear the screen like this thing is just maybe it's because i'm doing this vector conversion Either way, that, that's kind of weird for me how it's uh, laggy. Maybe I should have used C++ after all. SDL. Yeah, so. Ready, set, fire. Yeah, the, the draw is not very good on this. Fire again. See how it's aiming right for the dead center of the tower? That's with the, that's the power of linear algebra, getting that direction. Without linear algebra, you'd have to kind of guess which way to go. So you could be like, um, let's try it without linear algebra. This thing. All right, is it fired true? All right, if the bullet is fired, then here's how we're going to try it now. I'll say if, um, and I'm, I'm going to try to be as linear algebra free as possible. <laughs> Bullet X is less than, or actually, I, I need the absolute, I need the absolute, this absolute difference with the math.abs. Okay, cool. Math.absolute value of bullet X minus uh, target X is greater than math absolute value of bullet Y minus target one. And remember, this is just me playing around. This isn't anything to do with linear algebra. So the way I'm gonna to try to do this one playing around, I'm gonna see if, uh, if the X distance is greater, go X first. If the Y distance is greater, go Y first. That's what I'm gonna do. Well, for this one, we'll say greater than equal, so we'll default to X if they're the same. They should never be the same, though. All right, then travel x. So we'll say bullet x plus equals, um, which way to go? That's a good point. So if it's less than me, we'll go left. If it's greater than me, we we'll go right. Right, so let me. Oh, I gotta think about it. <laughs> 250. All right, negative 750 minus 500 equals some horrible 
negative number to the left. Or which value is greater? There we go. That's what you need to do. Oh. Plus equals F dot abs. No, 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 no. I want to do bullet speed times the elapsed time. I'm actually kind of curious what this is going to look like when I'm done, because this will be weird. Times, and then the, here's me trying to figure out whether I go left or right. So I will say if uh, bullet x greater than, I'm going to put a negative sign. Okay. Negative one. Else, positive one. So if my bullet is greater than where it's at, I need to go left, so times negative number. That should do it. Now I get to do the same thing for the y. Bullet y plus equals bullet speed times any time. Elapsed game time total seconds times bullet y greater than bullet y. So I got to be careful with this one because bullet y is greater 100 I need to go up so that's the same logic I don't know if this is gonna work I don't know what it's gonna look like I know it's gonna be weird it's gonna be a bullet that kind of turns and goes ready set fire <laughs> it made a curveball oh and then it stops of course but uh all right so uh what's neat about that one is he looks at his x or he looks at his x and his y and he says well which one is bigger and he says my distance in the y the up and down is greater so i'm going to cover that first so that's why you see him going up first then once he gets about halfway, he realizes, okay, now my X and my Y are about the same. So I'll take a step in the direction of X. Now my Y is smaller, so I'll take a step in the Y. Step in the X. Step in the Y. Step in the X. And that's why he starts going diagonal. And so that's kind of interesting. Basically, he moves to a point to where it's a straight diagonal line, and then he travels down that diagonal line. So let's see that again. Oh, my Y. up, oh, it's about the same. <laughs> Very interesting. And then once he gets to the target... Uh, normally, he would step past it. He's like, let's see, is the X bigger or is the Y bigger? Oh, the X is. I'll step, I'll step forward on the X. And then he realizes in the next frame, oh, crap, I've passed my target. Now i got to step back. So he's actually wiggling in place on top of the target right now. Very fun, but obviously that's not the way we want bullets to work, and that's why we use linear algebra instead. I'd, I'm not sure how else you could do it without linear algebra. So I'm going to comment this back in. And um, I'm going to end the video here. I hope it helped you out. I'm sorry I kind of ranted. Um, I kind of ramble every now and then. But it was a fun experiment. I'm also sorry that this stupid thing, uh, the graphics were flickery. I'm not sure what that's about. That's a mono game thing. I promise that has nothing to do with the program itself. But yeah, see, here's how a bullet should normally work. Once it hits the target, it keeps going. It's just your game code would, would realize, oh, the bullet hit the target. The bullet needs to die. Yeah, that's much better. All right, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a good day, and I hope this helped. Feel free to leave any questions for me if you have them.